Hello. Hello, test. Testing one, two, three. And six TLU testing the Johnson 500 transmitter. Sounds great. Welcome D Lab, everybody. I've got my new global industrial workbench set up, and the first radio on the bench is a Johnson 500 transmitter. It came up here with no output. I've resolved the issues. Now it's time to do a test. So the RF deck is out of the cabinet. So I had to bypass the safeties. I do not recommend that you do that, but sometimes you have to, especially if you're underneath trying to measure voltages, okay? So I've got the transmitter powered up on 220 volts AC. We're monitoring on a national 300 receiver. I have a, another camera watching the output on the watt meter. And of course you'll be able to see the modulator tubes flash when I talk. It's going to be a short test. I really don't like to leave this thing out of the cabinet. So first off, <clears throat> go over here and you check. We have our grid. Plenty of grid drive. And you can hear the zero in the NC300 all the way across the room, which is a good sign. So first we'll go to tune. I'm going to key it up with no audio. And there she is. All right. Now we're going to go to operate and we'll bring up some audio. Hello. Hello. Test. Testing one, two, three. And six TLU testing the Johnson 500 transmitter. Sounds great. All right, here's a summary of the repairs on this Johnson 500. As I said, it came to the shop with no output. The owner suspected that maybe high voltage was not reaching the RF deck. However, when the power supply was on and you keyed it, you would see the rectifier tubes illuminating, indicating that they are trying to provide high voltage. So I traced it all the way up to the 4-400 tube. High voltage was getting where it needed to go. However, I had no grid drive on the tube. I thought, okay, this is a 500. He had not seen it operate in the past, so possibly that 4-400 tube was bad. So luckily I had one, swapped it out, no difference, okay? So I worked my way down the line and I found that the 5763 tube wasn't even illuminating. The filament was open. That's the driver for the 4400. I thought, ah, that's it. Guess what? I replaced it, no difference. I thought, all right, I must have some type of an issue with the signal. Worked my way back and I found that the negative bias that's supposed to be on that 4400 was not there. After extensive troubleshooting, I located a broken wire on the function switch and that provided a negative 120 volts to the 4-400 tube. I repaired the wire and I thought, this has to be it. Guess what? No. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. So, so then the idea hit me to grab a frequency counter and check the output off the VFO. Yep, no output. So I popped the cover off the side of the VFO and luckily on the 500 it's pretty accessible versus a Ranger or a Valiant. First thing I spotted was that notorious 18K resistor. It was the old one. It measured about 22K. So I went ahead and swapped it out. I was going to do that either way. But then I also noticed that the 6AU6 oscillator tube wasn't lit. I reached in there and rocked it. Whoop, here she comes. Flipped that function switch to zero. I looked over. Up comes the drive current. And I was able to adjust the drive for normal operation. And of course you see I have full output now from the Johnson 500. This was about a 10 hour job, guys. At times I thought, am I gonna be able to find this problem? There's so many things that were wrong that were affecting that grid drive. It was a tough one. But one thing that really made it nice is having this new strong bench and a cart where I was able to move things around as I was working on it. This global industrial bench was a great buy. D-Lab Electronics.